In a previous video, we saw how to map an HTML form into our controller in Spring Boot. Now in this video, we want to see how we can reach from the controller down to our specimen service, and from our specimen service, we could even go to a DAO layer. I covered part of this before, but I want to just kind of show it again as a refresher. So first of all, if I navigate back out and I go to my service package, we're going to see that we have an interface called iSpecimenService. In the controller class, I have a variable, and it's a special kind of variable. It's one we're going to call a field or an attribute that is of type iSpecimenService. Now, I really should name the variable. I shouldn't call it after the stub. I really should just name it specimen service, which is a bit more generic. Uh, that is going to require a bit of refactoring. So instead of doing it like so, I'm going to right click and refactor and choose rename and we'll change this to specimen service. Now the name is somewhat important because that's one of the criteria that Spring uses to figure out which type of object to put in here. And the stub is just a temporary hard-coded fulfillment of the iSpecimen service contract. We know we're eventually going to replace that with an actual implementation. The actual implementation will probably not be called stub, which is why I want to go ahead and take the word stub out of here. And I save. Now a couple more things I need to do. I need to put an at auto wired annotation. And that says, hey Spring, can you go look for a good match? Now what's Spring going to look for? Spring's going to look across these packages where it's doing what's called a component scan, and it's going to look for something that implements this iSpecimen service interface. And we have one called specimen service stub. Now for this, we need to also add at component. And what we're saying with that component is essentially, I'm qualified to fulfill an at auto wired contract. So in other words, we're putting the two pieces of the puzzle together. So with that, let's go down to a method we were working on just recently. And that is our search plants method, uh, their endpoint rather. This is what's handling any kind of search that comes from the nav bar across the top. So I'm simply going to add a new line here and I'm going to say specimen service. And then we'll say dot fetch plants string string. And we're going to pass in the search term that we're getting from the URL and terminate with a semicolon. Uh, I can go ahead and assign this to a variable, control one, and we'll say assign to new local variable, give us something to inspect, and we see that's going to return a list of matching plants. And with that, I'll save, and I'll just confirm that I have a breakpoint set here. We'll set one on line 102, and then I will restart. So the application is restarted. Now let's go ahead and put in Eastern Redbud and choose search. There we go. And let's follow this through the debugger. So we see Eclipse lights up orange, which is good news. We see it has properly reached our endpoint. I'll go ahead and just show this in high def. There we go. And so uh, F6 will step over and F5 will step into. Now step into is very important. Uh, in debugging, step over means execute this line and move to the next. Step into means go into the first method call, and then the next, and then the next, and so on and so forth. So if we want to dig down dig down and make sure that we're actually going from the controller to our service package, or our service layer, we can choose F5 now. Watch carefully across the top as we have the tab. We're currently on the plant places controller. Uh, let me go ahead and choose F5, and take a look at where we've gone. Specimen service stub. So you see what's happened now is it's walked into the stub class that we filled out earlier. I can go ahead and choose F6 and we see it's going to go to our if test. F6, oh now that's interesting. Did you see that our if test passed is true and why is that? We'll take a look at our search term. Our search term is Eastern Redbud and this if test will, will evaluate to true if the search term either contains Edbud or contains Circus. So sure enough, this returned true. So it's populating a plant and it's returning that plant. And when we return, look at where we return to. We return to our controller. A uh, quick mouse over of fetch plants and we see there's one plant DTO in there. And sure enough, it is the Eastern Redbud Circus Canadensis. And I'll choose, uh, I'll choose F8 to tell it to continue. So a couple of important notes here. Note that the type of the variable that we're calling. So just let me connect the dots here. Notice that we are calling uh, specimen service. So note that specimen service, the name of this variable is specimen service. 
The type is iSpecimen Service. Neither of them are Specimen Service Stub, but it's able to figure out that Specimen Service Stub implements this interface, and it makes a match there. For this to work, we have to have a few things. First of all, this what this happens to be a variable, it has to have the auto-wired annotation. It does not require a getter and setter, but it does require the auto-wired annotation. Auto-wired can go on several things. It can even go into uh, constructors and some method calls as well. But nonetheless, this is a way we say, find something to plug in. If we take a look at the specimen service stub, uh, that has the uh, component annotation, which says, okay, I can fit into an auto-wire. Now for this to work, Spring has to be set up for component scan. Before annotations were really big, before Spring Boot was really big, there's a file called applicationcontext.xml, and inside of that you could put a component scan note in there, and it would say, okay, automatically wire up the components and the add auto wired, just do that for me. In Spring Boot, what's a bit more common is to go to our application class, and you'll see that we've annotated this with the at Spring Boot application annotation, and that includes component scan. So it automatically says, find components, find auto wires that match up, and make that magic happen. With this, we've now reached this critical integration point where we can go from controller to our service, and right now we just have a stub but we can begin building out this actual implementation class and we can annotate that with that component as well. And then Spring has the opportunity to use this specimen service as the object type, not just the stub. Coming over to the right side here, uh, we know now that we've done some wiring to here, we can use the same pattern to wire all the way down to our DAO. So this is the point where we start to get to integration. I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.